All right, hi everyone. Thanks so much for joining us. Um, I just wanted to say a little bit about this program, Academics and Adventure in the Gap Year. This is a recorded session that you will receive a link to after the event. However, if you're joining us now, you'll have the opportunity to pose questions to our fantastic panelists at the end. My name is Drew Beasley, and as the USA Gap Year Fairs Outreach and Events Coordinator, I wanna extend a huge thank you just for spending your evening with us. A little bit about who's speaking with you. I'm both a gap year alum and an experiential programs leader myself. I witnessed just how life-changing gap time can be for myself as well as scores of other students I've worked with. As you can see from these pictures, I've taken every opportunity I could to have meaningful travel experience from teaching English in Prague to leading trips in national parks and even volunteering my way across South America. However, I had no idea that I wanted to do any of this until I took a gap year in college. So believe me when I say that I'm so excited for you to join us tonight and begin planning your gap year journey hear from experts, learn about different options, and have the opportunity to, again, ask our great panelists questions about gap year programs all over the world. Again, before we get started, I just want to note that this information session is part of USA Gap Year Fairs, which is powered by Go Overseas. Go Overseas is a community-centered resource for all different types of travel experiences. You can think of us as Yelp, but for meaningful travel programs. You can visit Go Overseas to read verified alumni reviews, find programs, browse articles and guides, and learn about scholarship opportunities, including the $5,000 Gap Year Scholarship that closes March 15th. If you find today's session to be helpful, you're in luck, because we have no shortage of resources to help you continue your Gap Year exploration. In the chat, you should see a list of links corresponding to all of the resources I'm about to talk about. So first up is our digital guide. This virtual catalog is your best bet to familiarizing yourself with some of the most fantastic gap year program providers. You can get to know programs at a glance by their location, program offerings, and emphasis. But if all these programs make your head spin, we recommend that you also start with our gap matcher. This customizable quiz can help you find your top programs to consider based on your interests. Next up, we've got many more ways to interact and meet programs. Did you know that today's virtual event is one of many? You can join us for a virtual gap year exploration series, which will highlight different gap year providers and their program emphasis. This is an especially great series of events if you already have an inkling of what you'd like to do on your gap year, or if you're open to ideas. So now I'm very excited to welcome all of our panelists today, Alex from SEA, Logan from Knowles, and Adam from Carpe Diem. But before we hear about their programs, we're gonna hear from James Royan, our keynote speaker and gap year expert. Jane has more than 30 years of experience as a gap year expert matching young adults to programs of their dreams. Jane is also one of only a handful of accredited gap year consultants in the country. So take it away, Jane. Thank you, Drew. Um, and thanks for everyone who's here live or logging in later. Um, this is sort of the tail end of a few months of a lot of great um, information coming your way about the gap year from all kinds of people who feel so passionately like I do about this work of supporting young adults. And that's really at the heart of every story you'll hear, whether it's tonight's workshop on academics and adventure, or you came last week to um, arts and media, um, you think you wanna live on a tall ship or you wanna backpack or you wanna do a culture and language immersion program, whatever it is that's driving you, something is driving you to this conversation, which we all applaud you because it takes a lot of guts to start to think outside the box and think about what other kinds of environments will inspire you and help you get to that next stage of life, personally, spiritually, physically, academically, professionally. Um, so I'll briefly just say that J2 Guides is the um, long, long three decades of work and culmination of myself, Jane, and my husband, Jason, that is the J2 behind J2 Guides. Um, we both spent from our own gap years, which you can see me pictured far left in India, um, and the next you know decade or two of guiding programs, working with students in the field, um, becoming the director of a national nonprofit that took about 400 students overseas annually, um, summer high school programs, gap semester programs, and then moving about 15 years ago into gap year consulting. I've really had the privilege of sitting in a lot of different seats um, and wearing a lot of different hats, but all the while supporting, again, young adults who are really standing on the cusp of curiosity and change and wondering what else may be out there for them as they really step into their adulthood and this next journey of theirs. I'll just briefly say what is a gap year counselor because a lot of people haven't heard of that phrase that always gets a lot of blank stares when I'm sitting in airplanes with people. Um, 
a gap year counselor is really like a college counselor. My job is to really connect meaningfully with a family and understand the totality of their interests and goals and budget and aspirations and capabilities. And my other wheelhouse lies solidly in understanding what is out there all over the country and all over the world to help create a hopefully curated list of referrals. Again, like a college counselor that really takes from my knowledge and research of what's out there, takes that connection with the family and helps create a more kind of specified profile or listing of programs. So that is what a gap year consultant does. And I have the privilege of being here tonight to give that 30,000 foot macro level view of the gap year um, before you hear from these amazing programs that are soon on my heels. Um, Drew, next slide whenever you're ready. So that's a little bit about me and J2 Guides. What I want to do is just for a brief moment, um, I would be remiss if I didn't do a definition of a gap year because no matter how many times I've talked about it over 30 years, there's always someone in the audience who who has a certain definition that might lead them astray. So I think it's really valuable to make sure we're working um, with some similar language and, and ideas and expectations. It's actually really quite open-ended. And the definition of a gap year that Jason and I use is it's a intentional or a defined period of time in which an individual is looking to kind of expand their horizons um, for some amount of time. That's kind of the simplest definition I could offer you, the most distilled, because what I don't want to do is start suggesting locations or length of times or budgets, because then you might get that in your mind and think, well, that doesn't check our box or we can't afford that. Thus, we must not be a good gap year candidate. And in fact, we want to create a definition where everyone feels and sees that they are indeed a great gap year candidate, because really the operative word in my definition was intentional. This is something that a student or parent has thought about and things for any number of reasons, mental health, um, not ready for college academic burnout, um, desire to get real world experience, whatever your reasons are, and there are no wrong reasons, but there's a reason why you're wanting to push pause on where you are in your life right now in order to dive into this other set of experience or experiences, plural. So that is what I want to impart as we move forward with this great workshop tonight, which is a gap time or gap year is really whatever it is that you, the young adult is looking for right now at this crossroads. Um, and whether it is one month or 12 months, whether it's in the United States or overseas, whether it's work exchange or it's gonna cost you $20,000 and anything in between, that is for you to decide, not for me or anyone else to decide for you. So there's your working definition, I hope. And that helps everyone who is listening feel like they've got a place at this table, so to speak. Moving on from the definition and next slide when you're ready, Drew, I was thinking about people who'd be coming this evening to this idea of an academic focus. And all these programs here are gonna highlight, I'm sure, some ways in which they are bringing that kind of academic or intellectual experience to the gap year. And so what I wanted to break down is this notion of where does a college and gap year differ and where are they the same? And so one of the phrases that we all love in this field is not all classrooms have four walls. In fact, arguably the greatest classrooms out there don't have any walls. And so when I think about education, I wrote those five words down on the bottom of the slide, community, instructors, education, skills, engagement. And I think all of us here could agree that those five areas, really important and really relevant in both the college classroom environment, as well as the gap year environment. But there are some subtle differences. So when I look at these two pictures, and when I know from my own experience, and I will say that um, that is my co-leader and my husband, Jason, on the right, leading a semester program in Tanzania. And on the left, I will confess that is a stock photo because I didn't take that many pictures when I was going to college of the backs of heads. But that looks like a lot of my view when I was going to Boston University. So community, sure, I see community in both. What I see are a lot of backs of heads. I see classmates on the left. What do I see on the right? I see peers. I see a community of engaged young people who are earnestly looking at an instructor, wanting to hear and learn from this person, sitting informally, comfortably taking care of themselves. So community in both, absolutely, but look how they differ. Instructors, that's the big one. That's one of the really big ones. So we have an instructor potentially in a college environment from afar, someone who is there to make sure you come, you go, you turn in your assignments. If you have a question, you're gonna to have to go find that instructor or teacher during office hours. On the right, what we have as an instructor, we have a mentor. 
we have a really inspiring, really capable um, Swahili speaking a wilderness, um, you know, a comp a co uh, what's the word? Sorry, um, competent wilderness man, outdoor instructor, guiding, mentoring young adults, guiding them through a five day orientation of health, safety, culture, motion. How are these young gappers going to comport themselves safely? responsibly and meaningfully throughout their three months in Tanzania. So instructors in both, absolutely. Oversight, yep. But we can see how that really differs. Education, absolutely. But here's the big difference. Education from the kind of book smart area, um, from the um, kind of rote memorization repetition to the actual hands-on physical engagement, um, real world learning. Um, and then with the skills engagement, the last piece, because I know I've, I, I don't have a lot of time here, what I wanted to share is I feel like the left, that college picture, is really a journey of measuring um, performance, where the gap year is really measuring process. And that's the last piece I want to leave you with. I really believe that if you are here because you want your young adult or you, the young adult, want that enriching and growthful and academic and stimulating and intellectual experience, it is here for you in the gap year. It is waiting for you. I just wanted to kind of, you know, share the subtleties or not so subtleties of how these words that may exist in both environments have a little bit more life, meaning, and depth in a gap year. So I wanted to leave that thought with you. This will absolutely be every bit as intellectually engaging as you want it to be, if not within the four walls of an institution. And the last slide I wanna to go to, and then you're gonna meet with all these other great people. And I will stay muted in, um, in the background for Q&A at the end. What do you do with all this? You know, what, what do you do if you're seniors here? How do we start to take the next steps with this journey? Well, you're doing it right now, so that's great. So. You know, one thing that I think we're all super grateful for with COVID was that webinars and Zooming in became second nature. So take advantage of these webinars. There's so much great information, directors, access to people. So come to the webinars. Furthermore, if you see something tonight that really resonates, you should take down the people's names. You should be jotting down Logan and Alex and Adam's names. You're gonna get their emails. You should be following these programs on Instagram immediately and you should get on the phone. So everyone's gonna have a brilliant video and presentation. Um, they inspire me every time. I learn something new every time. You've gotta get on the phone with these programs and sooner rather than later. So any seniors here today, um, programs will start to fill. Our fall programs will start to be seeing some capacity being hit relatively soon. So we want you to start engaging with these people. Um, I will save the college process for the Q&A later. I also just wanted to mention the Gap Year Association. If you haven't been to that website, it is a treasure trove of data um, and um, programs um, and Gap Year consultants. And so on that note, I'll just go to the very top check mark, which is if you're still feeling a little confused, or maybe you figured out one program for your year, but not the rest of the year, you could always do a free consultation with J2 Guides and with any Gap Year Association accredited consultant. Um, we offer free consultations just to help answer your questions and help get you pointed in the right direction. So as Drew knows, I can fill up a 45 minute presentation really easily. Um, that's probably maybe five or seven. I will meet myself now. I'll be here in the background. Really excited to hear my colleagues present and happy to answer any questions um, via the chat. Thank you, Drew. Jane, thank you so much for all of that fantastic information. Um, like you said, I know that you could spend hours talking about this subject and we're hardly scratching the surface. So if you're watching this right now, don't forget that there's a Q&A button in the bottom right screen. If you've got any questions at any point, we'll save time at the end. Feel free to just drop them in the chat there and we'll go ahead and answer them towards the end. But without any further ado, I'm super excited to welcome our first provider, Alex of SEI. Uh, hi everyone, uh, my name is Alex. I'm an Institutional Relations Manager at SEA, uh, which is the Education Association. Uh, so we're a nonprofit organization that is focused on environmental studies in the world's oceans. Um, we have gap year programs uh, in addition to high school summer programs and undergraduate programs. Um, so just one fun fact, if you've ever seen Dolphin Tale 2, uh, you may have heard of SEA um, because in the film Sawyer receives a scholarship to a sea semester program. Um, and that is based on our real program that we offer. So I've worked in the field of experiential 
um, in international education for nine years, um, specifically with gap year students for over six years. Um, I got interested in this myself um, when I took a gap semester, uh, while, actually while I was in college. Um, and I have really enjoyed working with students who are interested in exploring and pursuing their passions um, either you know, before going to college and, and see what they really want to do uh, moving forward. Um, so I'll show you a, a quick video in a minute um, that relates to SEA's gap year programs. Um, so they are academically focused gap year programs. They take place on shore in Woods Hole, Massachusetts, which is on Cape Cod. Um, that's where we have a campus. So all of our programs start there um, and then um, the programs go to sea uh, aboard one of our tall sailing research vessels. So they are academically focused programs. Uh, like I said, um, they combine uh, field-based research on ocean conservation issues, um, as well as uh, learning to sail a tall ship. So our programs are offered either for credit. Um, so we're accredited through Boston University. So if you do the for credit option, you can earn 17 or 18 credits um, that way. Um, but also not for credit as well. Um, students are all together in the same program. Um, it's just more of um, you know focusing, you're still taking the classes, um, but not necessarily worrying about your final grade. Um, so true, if you can play the video, it'll give you a little bit of an idea of, you can see the ship. Two, six, That was a quick uh, view of our program. Um, our programs are 12 weeks in length, um, including six weeks on shore, both between uh, Woods Hole um, and wherever our program will depart from. Um, and then six weeks at sea. Um, so in the coming year, our, our ship moves around uh, a bit, um, but in the coming year, our program will be sailing uh, around New Zealand and then eventually to Tahiti. Um, we plan about a year in advance, um, so you'll see the cruise tracks following, um, like I said, about a year before then. Um, so that is a quick overview of our program. Thanks so much, Alex. That video and hearing all about that makes me wanna set sail and anchor the way right, right now. Uh, in the meantime, I did want to ask a quick question, and that is what can students expect from participating in a program with SEA? Yeah, so um, on the program, like I said, there's an initial six weeks on shore, followed by six weeks at sea. So the onshore component is where students are really um, starting to get the foundation of what they're going to be learning at sea. Um, so they're starting to take their classes. So these classes are uh, a mix of both uh, humanities, um, so history and policy, um, as well as oceanography, um, all surrounded uh, or focused on a specific theme based on where the ship is. So students start taking that those classes. Um, they're learning about nautical science as well. Um, and then they spend the next six weeks at at sea where they're really putting um, that foundational knowledge um, into practice. Um, so uh, students are on watch, um, we sail through the night, um, we break students up into small groups, um, about 24 um, is the maximum students we have. Um, we break them up into watches and you do every aspect of the shipboard activities. So whether that is working in the lab, uh, we have a wet lab and a dry lab on board, um, you could be learning to uh, chart and navigate. Um, you could be, you know, hand doing sail handling. Uh, it's very hands-on. Um, so that I would say is a bit about what you could expect on the program. 
thanks so much, Alex. Thank you. Up next, we've got Logan from Knowles. Hi, all. Um, first, I just want to give a preamble here. Uh, I have my daughter with me. She's nine months, and she may do some cooing, cawing, or the uh, every once in a while blood curling scream. So bear with me here. Uh, but Knowles, the National Outdoor Leadership School, and we are just that. We specialize in backcountry expeditions that take students uh, to such places, and we really highlight leadership skills. Um, from the pictures here, you can see that we do everything from rock climbing to sea kayaking uh, to mountaineering to backpacking. You can stay at a campo uh, in Patagonia, Chile. You can go over to New Zealand and explore where the Lord of the Rings was uh, shot and filmed. Um, so a lot of great opportunities with, with our courses. Um, you can also receive college credits through Knowles. Um, we are accredited through the University of Utah and Western Colorado University. Um, both of those can give you academic credit for courses that are um, anything longer than eight days. So that being said, we offer courses uh, down to about eight days all the way up to a full academic year. Um, currently, we are only offering one program. It is our year in Patagonia. You can get up to 32 college credits uh, while you're there. Uh, because it is over the course of that academic year, you'll, of course, get some uh, a semester break there in the middle, but it will span over the course of fall and spring. So you'll have a nice little course uh, or a break there in the middle, uh, and then you'll, you'll go off to your other activities. Um, on those longer semester and year courses, you're going to have a, a large number of skill sets that you're gonna, gonna master, a lot of survival skills that you're gonna master. Uh, in Patagonia, you will do rock climbing, you will do sea kayaking, mountaineering, um, you'll have a cultural expedition where you will stay at a, a family at their ranch or a compo, um, and you'll help them with chores and, and get to know that family. Um, so really great opportunities uh, here at Knowles. I, I always give these these spiels and then know that I forgot something. Uh, so questions are always um, great there at the end. I love the Q&A process. Um, our headquarters is here in Lander, Wyoming. Uh, we started in the Sinks Canyon State Park, uh, which is in the Wind River Range, which is a subset of the Rocky Mountain Range. Uh, so just to get nice and specific there, it's where we started in uh, 1965. Our founder, Paul Petzelt, uh, started just in a little shack in the uh, in the Wind River, or excuse me, in the Sinks Canyon uh, Canyon. And we built from there and we have had, um, I believe at this point, now I can say hundreds of thousands. I think we just when over 200,000 people go through our uh, our courses. And so we love what we do. We're very passionate. Uh, I loved Jane's point about the instructors and how they're such an essential part of your gap year. Here at Knowles, they are. We train our instructors to be um, the, best in the, the best in the class. We want them to be out there um, teaching our leadership curriculum, our survival skills, and everything in between. We want you to, to come out thinking, and that instructor was amazing. I wanna be just like them. Um, and that's where I think I'll I'll stop. I can't wait for the Q and A section. That's where I that's where I really thrive. Thanks so much, Logan. I do have one quick question for you right off the bat. All of this rock climbing in Patagonia and sea kayaking and trekking all sounds incredible. But if I'm considering a gap year, how do I know if a Knowles course is right for me? Yeah, that's a fantastic question. Um, we are looking for students who are passionate, who want to be outside. They don't need experience. Our instructors do an amazing job at catering to the skill level of the individual. Before you even get into the backcountry, you'll have that conversation with your instructor about how comfortable you are rock climbing, about how comfortable you are sea kayaking. And because these wilderness skills are so, you know, kind of out there, a lot of times our students are not going to have a lot of experience. Sometimes they do. And when we do have students who have a lot of experience in rock climbing or backpacking or, or mountaineering, um, we utilize that skill base that they already have to help other students. And so it's just an amazing and a very inclusive place. Um, any student who is, is passionate and ready to be outside and wants to grow themselves as a leader, that's who we want at Knowles. Thank you for that question. Drew. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks so much, Logan. All right, next we're gonna pass it over and hear from Adam at Carpe Diem. Hey, uh, Drew, maybe we can pause the video for I one wasn't. second. I'll, um, oh, <laughs> I can chat a little bit and then we can put the video on. Um, but hello everybody. Um, I am, this is such good timing. I'm actually visiting my parents and I'm sitting in the room where I was doing my homework when I was 18. My mom even 
left some of my childhood artwork out for me. Um, and it's just so nice to be in here and, and think about what, where was I when I was 18? Um, I was definitely not necessarily prepared to be out there living independent in the world. Uh, and I wish I was, I, I was aware of gap year programs um, at that time. Um, and Carpe Diem education are, uh, programs are amazing um, for students that they might not know exactly what drives them. They're looking to connect with the passion that's going to become the foundation of their life for decades to come. Um, so these programs are amazing for students that are looking for a bit of variety um, and looking to build those key life skills, communication skills, community, um, curiosity that are going to carry them through life. So Carpe Diem Education, we offer 10-week semester programs in the fall and the spring. We have programs um, in Central America, South America, Italy, Greece, Australia, New Zealand, Maui, Big Island, uh, India, Nepal, Thailand, Cambodia, Australia, New Zealand. I believe that is our uh, our roster of programs, um, and they com comprise several different components. Every program is going to have a focus on community engagement, cross cultural immersion, service learning, language study, homestay, um, outdoor exploration, a reflective retreat, outdoor adventure, environmental conservation, uh, and then something that I love so much about Carpe Diem programs that's really unique is the element of student-directed travel. Uh, and so students are building these key skills over the course of the program. Later on in the program, students have a week where you may be in Northern Thailand and you've got seven days and a certain budget um, and you need to come to a consensus with your group. How are you gonna allocate that budget? Um, where are you gonna stay in between? Um, how do you wanna focus that time? And so really taking the skills that you've been developing along with the mentors on your program um, to be able to make those decisions together. So. Carpe Diem program is amazing for, um, for students that are seeking something a little bit more, want to go a little bit deeper, um, are really seeking that, that deep community um, experience with the other people on their programs. Um, amazing blend of experiential education, intercultural exchange. Um, small group programs, we cap our programs at 13 students uh, with two instructors. Um, and I think uh, I, lo I love like Logan chatting about uh, about instructors. We invest a lot in having incredible instructors in the field. The mentors that gap year students get to work with on group programs are going to have such a big impact, not only on the program, but uh, on the rest of their lives. And it's something that we take really seriously. Um, we treat our um our leaders as professionals. Um, I've led 11 experiential uh, programs in the field and, and I was brought back every year just with the way I was treated. Um, so we yeah, awesome programs for students that are looking for, um, you know, quite a bit of everything. Um, and yeah, maybe you can, uh, you can hit uh, play on the video. We can hear a little bit from students uh, and their reflections on their experiences ready to go to college yet. I didn't feel like that was my calling at the moment and I wanted to find something that was going to kind of changed my perspective on a lot of different things. I was just at this like young life crisis. I know there's a midlife one, but there's a young one where you just don't know what you're doing with your life. One thing that all of us had in common when coming to this program in Central America was looking for a kind of a change from our whole lives and to experience something new. It just sounded so amazing to go someplace and to see something that I was like, you know what, why not apply? Why not check it out? Why not leave this door open? And sure enough, after three months in India, I definitely felt like my perspective on so many different aspects of life had been completely rearranged. So I had read what the program was going to be like, but that doesn't mean that I really knew what I was in for. The first thing I noticed was immediately how loud it was. The motorcycles and the people biking, and then there's the tuk-tuks that are going all over the place. It was hot, I mean like, the nature over there, it's just like different. Everything was different. The smells, the colors, the sounds, the sights, but I've never experienced that level of sensory overload. I had a really internal feeling that I was where I was supposed to be at. We were all eager to connect with each other and everyone was super outgoing and nice. So it really helped us bond together really quickly. The students on the trip, I mean, I love them so much. It's like, we're related. <laughs> I learned to be even more patient and diligent and roll with the punches. It was really exciting to see how I rose to that occasion. 
The program really set me up to help me focus on where my interests are and help me change my career path into something that I actually want to do more. The Carpe program helped give me a newfound confidence in myself that was grounded in real world challenges. I remember feeling really fulfilled about where I was at. You just absolutely blossom as a human. Honestly, I can't imagine my life without Carpe Diem. Awesome, thanks, True. So that's just a little sense of what a Carpe Diem education program can look like. It's totally different in, in every place and it's different every semester with different instructors and a different community of students, um, but just amazing for the student that's looking for a really deep experience and um, yeah, is open to is open to transformation. Great, well, thanks so much, Adam. That was a really awesome video to, to watch. Um, like I said, makes me just wanna get up and and head out on my own Carpe Diem semester right now. Um, I did wanna ask one quick question though, and that is what type of student thrives on a Carpe Diem education semester? I think a student that thrives on a, on a Carpe Diem semester, um, it's a student that's, that's seeking a different type of learning. I know for me, uh, you know, classroom learning was okay, but it was when I get out and touch things and feel things and experience things and meet with people um, is really what lit me up. Um, and so I think it's for a student that that loves learning, um, but wants to try something different. Uh, and also great for a student that is intentionally looking for some challenge. You know, these programs are designed to be challenging for every student in different ways. Um, sometimes physically, sometimes emotionally. Um, the challenge of group living um, is is real and so rewarding. So students that that really want to put themselves out there a little bit um, and, and invest a lot in their own um, journey of, of growth and discovery. Thanks so much, Adam. And with that, we're going to go ahead and switch to the Q&A portion of our evening. So if you do have any burning questions at the moment, like I said, you can feel free to drop those in the Q&A section on the bottom right hand of your screen. But in the meantime, I'll go ahead and kick it off with another question of my own. This one directed towards Jane. Jane, at the end of your fantastic presentation, you had hinted a little bit that you had some more things to say about the gap year to college transition process. Do you want to expand on that a little bit? Sure. Yeah, I think, I mean, it's just the time of year for particularly seniors who are trying to figure out waiting to hear from college or they've heard and deferral and what or juniors are like, do I apply to gap year and then like, how does it all work out? So um, for seniors, let's just say who've gone through the college process and are really excited about the gap year, it's very possible you can have your cake and eat it too. That's what we all hope. So you will very likely request a deferral or to defer your college admission for a year. Um, and it's a pretty straightforward process, but you do want to kind of get your ducks in a row. So whether you know you've heard from all your schools or you're still waiting tonight, you can go to every website of every school that you have applied to, and they probably have a statement about deferrals or gap years. And if they don't, you could draft a quick email to send off to the admissions officer or wait till call during business hours and just find out, you know, really excited about your school, really excited about the gap year. What is the process of requesting a deferral? Usually it's it's uh, something like submitting, um, usually you sign something saying you will not, if you're committing to that school, they'll ask for a deposit and you will sign something saying that you won't enroll in another school. Um, and then they may want a letter that talks about what you're planning to do. And I will, when I'm done, drop a link um, in the chat with a, a sample letter that you're welcome to, to customize if that's helpful for you. Um, so that's where I would just say, you know, most seniors, that's the process you're facing right now. For juniors, um, the timelines work really well together. So if you have some energy and momentum around applying to college, uh, many of us would say, yes, go with that and apply to schools. Similarly to what I just said, you can find out now the schools that you're applying to and what their stance is on gap years. Um, but you certainly have plenty of time to get all of your college applications in, whether it's regular decision, early action, or early decision. And come January, February, start to really, in, of your senior year, really be investigating your gap year options. So you don't have to be kind of juggling all of these massive balls at once. That would be a lot. Um, 
and gap your programs in terms of like, how much do I need to be worried about the competitiveness of programs or how quickly do they fill? Um, gap year programs are very much looking for people who want to be with them. So it's going to be a mutually selective process. So if you've read everything and watched the videos and you feel like this is the program of my dreams, 99% likely you are also the candidate of their dreams. So it's not going to be, we're going to take 100 applications and take the top 5%. That's not the way the gap year world works. Most programs do fill first come, first serve. There will be an application process. There will be some kind of interview. If there's maybe not a quite a matchup, that will get very respectfully discussed. Um, and your chances are really good that you're going to probably get into the programs that you're applying to. So you will not be applying to 20 programs like you're applying to 20 colleges. You'll apply to one. And programs will tend to fill about four months-ish a lot of looseness there prior to their departure date. So if you're going to stack up a gap year with multiple experiences, you don't have to apply to everything at once. You're going to go for your fall program first, take a break, apply to your next program and your next. So you're going to do that kind of um, chronologically. I think I addressed that in a bit. If there was any confusion, someone feel free to jump in or, or, or ask in the chat. Awesome. Thanks, Jane. That about sums it up. Um, but I did want to open it up to our providers um, and tie that in with a question we received from the chat. Now, Jane, you touched a little bit about how programs aren't exactly like a college interview process, um, but Annette is asking, what is that application process? Um, is there an emphasis on grades? What is the interview like? Um, are there letters of recommendation? Um, and I just wanted to open it up to our providers to talk about any of your more specific um, criteria or mm -hmm. anything specific to your program. Yeah, I can, I can tune in on this. I think it's different for every organization. Um, we do not look at grades, um, particularly because it's it's a very different type of learning environment. And, and there may be students that, that didn't love classroom learning that will excel um, in more experiential learning. Um, we do in, interview every student. That's a huge part of the program. Um, and I think, as, as Jane was saying, it's not you know, we're not looking like a job interview to like poke holes in their application. We just want to see that there's a genuine interest on the student's part of being part of this experience, that they understand the experience. Uh, and, and as I mentioned before, that they recognize that there's going to be elements of this that are going to be challenging. And that's something that they're opting into. Um, and so, yeah, just making sure that it's a really good program fit. And if the students aren't a great fit, um, it's great to, to have people like Jane around to help students find the right fit. And, and also, we're happy to, to recommend other programs that we think could be a, a, a great fit for those students. But interview is a big part. We do not currently ask for teacher recommendations. And for me, in terms of the interview part, I would say the same thing. I mean, we do ask for transcript and teacher recommendations, um, but we don't have a minimum GPA requirement. Um, it's more just to see kind of what students are interested in and what they thrive in, um, in, in terms of the teacher recommendation to learn more about students because it is very hands-on in what we're doing. And so understanding the students don't necessarily thrive in an environment where they're in a sit down classroom type situation. Um, so we look at it holistically, um, including, like I said, the grades, teacher recommendation, um, short essay to see why you're interested in doing our program. And our interview is also not formal. Um, we do have one, um, but it's really to learn more about the students um, and then also really make sure that they understand what they are getting themselves into, um, especially in a program like ours um, where you are going to be on a ship. Um, it's a unique type of program um, and we just want to make sure we can answer any questions the students have as well. So it's more of a conversation, I'd say, than a truly formal interview. And to, uh, to finish this off, we just have a application fee, $65 for any program that you are interested in. And then our only vetting process is a health form that needs to be filled out by a, a licensed medical provider. And they just say, yay or nay, this person is physically fit enough. And um, I don't think there's any mental um, side of that application, but it's it's really just uh, kind of looking at the physicality. And if they sign off, then you're good to go. I will say that we, <clears throat> that sounds really, <clears throat> excuse me, 
that sounds really unpersonal compared to the other two who like talk to students and have interviews. Um, so that's that's amazing. Um, but we do provide uh, per personal admissions officers for each one of our courses. And so they'll connect with you immediately after that application has been submitted and they'll ask, do you have questions? What can I help with? Um, there's a dashboard that you need to be completing, which is just some paperwork on our side and your side. Um, and they are they're kind of hands on. They'll invite you to some webinars, much like this one, some Q and A's you'll talk about. Uh, your departure date, you'll talk about the equipment you need, those types of things. So uh, a little bit different of an application process here at Mills. We talk a lot about the transition from high school into a gap year before college, um, but what does your programs look like for students who are already in college? Or furthermore, do you have programs or offerings um, for students who are finishing up college and want to take a post-collegiate gap year? Um, Jane, I'd love to start you off with just like a little bit about what you see in terms of trends in the field. And then again, if you each want to say a little bit about where you see that in your programs. Yeah, thanks, Drew. And thanks, Deborah, for that great question. I think that um, we work with a lot of college students and that we always have. And, and that number has grown a lot since COVID. So um, Sometimes they're coming for a semester, sometimes for a full year. So just, um, again, that kind of macro level view, I just want to say, I think a gap year is an incredibly appropriate and relative and, and, and yeah, a really appropriate and productive option for a college student or college graduate who, again, is at that impasse, is at that crossroads, is, isn't feeling satisfied or fulfilled or whatever it may be. Um, I won't speak for each of these programs. I will let them address that, but I will say we are working with a lot of students that are, I would say, 19 to 25 years old. Um, some college students are coming to it because they are, you know, a few years um, into college and aren't really sure about their college major. So they're often a little more focused. They want to get some hands-on experience, some internships in the field. The college graduates I've worked with similarly are thinking about a graduate degree and how great I never got to maybe travel before. So maybe I can take some gap time, get some exposure to this possible career path before I commit to um, another kind of advanced degree. So I think a gap year is, is a great investment uh, financially and emotionally, et cetera, for an adult uh, who is beyond that kind of 17, 18 year old mark. I'll leave it at that and let my colleagues comment on the suitability of their individual programs. Yeah, I'll chime in for a second. I, I'm recently back from visiting um, with some professors and admissions officers at Tulane University, where I went. Um, and the consensus there is, in, in partially this is related to the pandemic, is that a lot of 18 year olds are not coming into college with the requisite life skills to be really successful in, in independent living for, for a variety of different factors. So there are more students that are not finding that direct link from high school to college to be super smooth uh, and more students that are wanting to take a break from just like intense academia from, you know, age five to 21 uh, and a gap year can be really nourishing um, in, in like, yeah, like rebuilding that that love for learning in a, in a different way. So um, I think that that taking a semester off from college, um, I think a lot of these gap year programs, like all the programs that are here tonight would be amazing opportunities from my perspective um, for students to be able to recharge and re-engage. Yeah, I'd say I personally, I, I mentioned this briefly earlier. I took a gap semester while I was in college um, and I still actually did end up graduating um, on time with people I started with, um, but I wasn't, I hit a point where I wasn't really sure what I wanted to be doing after college and needed a break from um, the intense coursework I was doing. So I do understand that feeling of wanting to take gap time during college and it definitely helped me figure out what I want to do um, in the future. And then in terms of how it relates to our programs, um, I also did, I think, briefly mention that we, um, SEA does undergraduate programs as well. Um, so we get a mix of students, really. Um, so our gap year students are, there's only one um, option each term um, that gap students can uh, participate in. Um, but we also do get undergraduate students who will be um, on the ship at the same time. Um, and so you're doing some of the the same things in classwork. Um, and then we do get students who um, we have other undergraduate programs as well. And we definitely get students who are either transitioning from um, community college uh, to a four-year college and will maybe take a semester off and do one of our programs. Um, 
as well as students who just are interested in taking um, a semester off as well, because you do have the for credit and non for credit option. Um, so I think we really do get a mix of students. Uh, it just depends on uh, what program we're offering at the time um, and I guess what you'd be eligible for in that sense. And yeah, like like before, I would echo uh, Alex and Adam both. Um, we do see a lot of students who decide usually during holiday breaks, maybe college isn't for me. Uh, maybe I want to take a gap year, those types of things. So we see big call volume in our customer service uh, when it comes to those those conversations that are happening during Thanksgiving and Christmas and the, the holidays around there, um, which are always fantastic. And I love to chat with people about other options. Um, we also at Knowles find some longevity with our students because um, we do offer summer programs starting at age 14 uh, all the way up. And so sometimes we'll have students take a Knowles summer course when they're 14 or 15 or when they're 16, 17 or 18 plus and then decide, you know, when they're in college, yeah, I, I do want to commit and take that that whole gap year or that or that gap semester. And we love to see those return students. Um, we love to see them come back time and time again. And so um, that's where that what we differ a little bit is we do offer some um, middle school, high school courses there as well. Sorry, I do want to jump back in really quickly here. I forgot about the postgraduate option. Um, so we don't offer programs uh, specifically for students who have already graduated from college. But one thing that I have found um, that's really interesting is um, our, we do get a lot of students who have either done our GAP program, done our undergraduate program, who decide to take maybe you want to call it GAP time um, after college and they come back and will work from us. And they have done that in both. Um, working as a deckhand, so more focusing on the sailing aspect, or working as an assistant scientist um, after doing the program and they're sailing with us and helping um, teach the students as well. So we do get that um, aspect a lot as well. And I'd say I'm about to go out on the ship with um, some of the crew, and I'd say over half of them did our program at some point in time, have recently graduated and want to kind of figure out, they're not exactly sure where they want to go or what they want to do for perhaps full-time work, perhaps graduate work. Um, so they're coming back to be on the ship and share their experience with uh, current students. Well, in the likeness of time for this evening, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up with our final question of the night from Kai as to where we can find any of the webinars from last week or the second to last ones tomorrow night and the night after. I just dropped a link in the chat. You can view any of those about dozens of different programs um, right now on our YouTube channel. You'll also receive a link to tonight's recording in the next day or so. Um, and before we do wrap up, I would encourage any of you watching to hop on and grab the contact information before it disappears from the chat. With that, I wanna issue a huge thank you to all of you for tuning in, uh, whether it's live right now or it's on a recording afterwards. And thank you to all of our panelists for spending their evening with us. Uh, thank you so much and have a good evening.